Hi, Jessica Henry Gray here. I'm excited to be back here today with you. Um, just wanted to uh, get on here today and chat. I missed you all last week. And um, so yeah, I have some, um, just, oh, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit here. We're gonna wait a little bit for um, some others to join, but I just wanted to talk to you a little bit before uh, we jump in. Um, hello, everybody. Good to see you out there. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about some things um, while a few others come on. So um, hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, yeah, so anyway, um, before we jump in, just wanted to say uh, just a quick um, hello to everybody. And um, uh, as far as my friends in the Ukraine, um, you people out there, we are praying for you. You are in our hearts, our thoughts, our minds all the time. Um, we are praying for you daily. Um, so just know that you are not forgotten. And um, yeah, so <laughs> we are we are definitely, you're in our hearts. Um, wanted to let you know that. Uh, so anyway, um, and as well as Australia, uh, I have some friends in Australia as well, um, hearing about the flooding and um, the devastation there. Uh, uh, it's 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 a nightmare there's there's so much going on in the world and so many people hurting um, so uh, it's a terrible way to start this video um, but anyway uh, I seem to be on this campaign of peace um, a lot of the paintings that I've been doing lately have been reflective around the concept of peace and so I think that that's gonna be my concept for all of my paintings this year in fact I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that uh, so yeah, that's that's where I'm going. Anyway, so hi everybody. Yeah, we're just I'm I'm kind of just waiting for a little bit more people to come on as I'm telling you a little bit about. Um, get, I'm going to talk about what I'm doing here today. This is just blocked in, but I'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, so let's see. Um, I'm going to talk a little more about. Oh, join my newsletter. I have a, some exciting things um, coming up. I'm going to talk a little bit more about my newsletter. We are going to be doing um, some more things with my newsletter. So um, I'm going to have links. They're not on here yet because this is a live video. But when this video is up and running um, here on YouTube, I'm going to put links down below that will have um, links to my newsletter. So join my newsletter if you're not already on it. Um, we'll be doing more on that. Um, join my blog, whatever. Um, going to be doing some fun things, short, short newsletters that'll just have some fun, um, you know, two minute tips and things like that, that I think that you're going to enjoy, um, updates on my workshops and, um, just fun stuff like that. So check that out. Um, check out my upcoming workshops. There's still space in Destin, Florida. There, there is still space in Flor in, um, France. So check that out. Um, can I mention real quick, which plenary easel I, use most yes um in fact on that note i'm gonna do here very soon maybe even in the next couple weeks an entire i'm gonna redo my plein air video of equipment um hi uh that because i think you know um the last plein air equipment video i did um it's kind of outdated and i change and sort of evolve and um so the what i do use for my plein air easel i do use the open box m and i like that one a lot because it's only a pound and a quarter um there are other easels on the market and i do like mine that i have um but a lot of students recommend ask me to recommend something and i'll give you some other options that i do advise people um when they're in the market looking for easels so i'm going to redo that video coming up soon so I'll be looking for that. And in fact, if you join my newsletter or my blog, um, I will be updating you on upcoming videos that I'm gonna talk about soon. So look into that, check out. And um, when this this video is uploaded to YouTube, I will put um, those links so you can join my newsletter and stay up to date on all of those upcoming things. So check out my workshops, um, Destin, still space is available. I will be in Ireland this summer. We have some workshops coming up um, with those I'm really excited about. Room in France as well as Oregon later this year. Okay, guys, that's it for my um, yak, 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 yak. <laughs> All right, so this is what I'm going to be working on today. So I blocked it in just this morning um, really quick. Uh, sorry, it's, it's kind of rough. Anyway, 
Um, so what I what I wanted to do here is just to show you when you're out planner painting. Um, a lot of times we're on the beach, and I have two beach workshops this year. And and one of the main things I tell students is, okay, when you're trying to do a wave painting on the beach, you take a mental photograph of the wave as it's coming at you, and and you kind of try to capture that in your head as you're painting. And I say that, and I see a lot of people taking pictures of the the wave, and then they're painting from the, the their camera phone. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> that's not what I mean. Don't don't paint from your phone use it for reference at home but not on the, not while you're standing there like take it in your head and then you you kind of capture that every time that wave does that again you sort of paint that again so when you have this sea foam coming at you um, you try to capture that again so when you're at home here like this now and you've got your all your photo references this is a great time to practice your sea foam reference and and I always try to think that when you're home doing these um, studies from your photo references, file them away in your mind like um, like recipe cards and you kind of just pull out these tips. And so that's what I want to offer these little um, videos, tips and tricks, that <laughs> techniques that you can just pull out these little cards. Oh yeah, what was it just said about painting seafoam? And so that's what I'm going to show you here today. So I blocked it in and just this is sort of at that stage in the painting when you're ready to paint the seafoam. Okay, so I've, I've got sort of the ocean blocked in, the sky, and you know, you work your way from the background to the foreground. And I've sort of mapped in where I want the sea foam. And it's such a nice lead in, you know, a lot of uh, plein air paintings or landscapes have a path or railroad or, you know, a sidewalk or whatever as your lead in into the painting. In this case, you know, here we're on the beach, that sea foam is the perfect sort of lead in into the painting. So. I'm going to use that and at this point now I've, I've used that dark wet sand under that lacy pattern um, as my foundation. So I've looked at my reference picture over here and to determine what color it is underneath. So it's sort of like a deep midnight blue and so I've just used the ultramarine blue and um, burnt sienna under, under my everything and I have a bunch of extra colors on my palette because I'm working on a bigger painting. Um, which is also has sea foam in it and so it's gigantic so I'm not going to lift it up and show you but I'll show you at another time <laughs> but yeah so um anyway so I've got that laid down now I were I like to work in layers when I look at water I try to look at what is happening below the surface first and then I build up in layers so in this case what is underneath the surface when I first look at the water. So I'm pulling this just a little bit closer so you can see a little bit better kind of what's happening. You can kind of see that a little. Okay. Let me get a smaller brush. So I'm just going to take, this is a size four, any, any kind of medium sized brush. And I'm going to take a sort of a, not a bright light, but just sort of a purple. Let's get a Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, and White. You can't really see that. So and I've in this cup here, I've got some Galka Gel. So blue, what, um, Alizarin, and some white. And at this point, I'm looking for a middle range purple violet color. Now, I'm not going for my lightest white yet. This is going to map out where my sea foam's gonna go. So I'm gonna set this down. You, it's not necessary that you see my palette at this point because I'm trying to get myself further back from my easel so that I can hold my brush back and I hold my brush way back at the end so that I can get far back from my easel and I look at where I'm going with the angles. Um, someone had commented, it's, it's actually, it's difficult to get sea foam to lay properly on the beach and it is actually because you you're dealing with sort of an elliptical problem with the the perspective <clears throat> so i'm looking at the sand and how it's all wet and laying flat and the angle that the the foam comes this way and the sand tucks under so the angle of these the wet sand comes or the water comes this way and the angle of the foam comes this way so as these connect, 
And this purple is just helping to direct where I want the patterning to go. And if I don't see your comments, um, I, I, if, if I don't see them and you have a, an important question and I can't get at it, try to ask it again when I post these videos um, because they, um, they disappear. I don't know why. Okay, so. And, and I'm using as many horizontal strokes as I can. Let me try to pull you in a little bit closer too. There we go. All right. Now, instead of getting all the little zigzaggies, what can happen is I can get focused on the zigzags and not notice the big picture. So I've got this coming this way. So I'll get all the little subtleties later, but right now it's important to me to get the, the big angles. It's okay if I already have something down and I don't like it. I can, it's, it's oil paint, so it wipes off very easily. I think that I want that a little deeper. So I'm looking at the overall shape of this and how this comes up this way. And I like where that overall shape is going. That is the most important to me than all of the little tiny nuances of everything in there. So if I like that shape, then I can go ahead and put um, the general mass of, if I squint at my, the foam pattern, just squint at that. And I'm just getting a light, gentle layering of this lacy pattern. And you can see it's just, it's almost like just gently glazing my brush over it. And that's all I'm gonna do from that. And I haven't got to the, the nice pancake portion of it yet. But I'm just getting that, that soft feathering. This is, Really, I have to say, this is my favorite part of painting beach scenes. I love this. The bigger the challenge, the more I enjoy it. This is really, I think, the, the most fun. Well, besides painting the cresting. <laughs> I don't know, I just love painting water. I think I could paint water the rest of my life. In, in all the different ways you could paint it, I'd never get tired of it. All the challenges, the, the different all the different moods. Okay, so we've got sort of that taking shape. Now, I'm gonna clean up around the edges, wipe the brush off. This color on the edge is completely different than what's on the water side of the edge. Okay, so wipe my brush off, and which is basically just a, I'm taking some of the cadmium yellow, um, that's um, cad yellow deep, I'm gonna take some of that yellow ochre into that just to tone it down because cad yellow with just the white is kind of, I don't know, it's not right. And this will help clean up. Ooh, that's way too bright. Let me tone that down. That's better. I guess if there's anything I can show you <laughs> it's not to be afraid because there's like no mistake I haven't made on canvas that I haven't shown you <laughs> you can't fix I 
I, for those of you who've watched me over the years, you've probably seen me make every mistake possible. That's better. And then this one, I don't know, there's a piece of foam going up like that and I want it more horizontal, so we're gonna level that out. I feel better about that. I'm just gonna make this a little bit whiter, white, whiter back in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not sick. I just. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's that's a little better. <laughs> okay. So that is coming together. Okay. Now, um, coming back to here. That is fine for the sand. I think it's a little, maybe a little too yellow. I still want that to be a little whiter. One thing I don't want to do is get carried away working on the painting when I really just want to stay with showing the foam. So I don't want to get going on all of that. Okay, so back to this. I'm cleaning up around the edges. of the foam because that's really going to give us that pancake feeling. Just if that has a nice interesting Cut out edge. Okay. Now down the edge, down the front of this here. Seems like it gets darker pretty quickly. But that's going to work to our advantage because the front of the foam gets really light. So those are just observations you can make when you're out planner painting. <clears throat> when you see something get dark, see if something is light next to it. What makes it appear dark? Is it something that's light? And what makes something appear light? Is it something that gets dark next to it? And again, this is a painting that I could spend a long time playing with, and fiddling with, and so forth. And I probably will. This will probably be one that I spend a lot longer on working on for a gallery. But for now, I'll get back to cleaning up around the edge of this. Okay. So taking this brush, and I'm going to sharpen the edge. We'll come back through here. I'm just trying to sharpen some places. I like to think about the edge of the foam where it comes up to the land as being like a, a sort of a kitty paw as it sort of curls like this. 
it just sort of gives you that visual. And I'll, this might, some of this might get lost and I'll have to come and revisit, tucking that line in a little bit more, sharpening it, or in some cases losing it. I'm working right now on developing some of the spots as I'm gonna start to now work on the lace sort of that lacy pattern um, of the this foam over the this darker pattern this patchwork so I took some darker uh, paint and just dabbed where I saw some of the dark peeking through but I'm going to take some of that violet color that I'd mixed up that alizarin and blue and white and before I get the really light colors just going to take some of the darker can you can everyone see okay good and I'm going to squiggle on some of the lines now this is where you really need to practice patience because you can get isn't there a faster way? <laughs> and it just depends on what you want to do. If you want to try to just quickly get this done, um, you know, maybe suggest some of these. Or if you just want to work on a passage and then work on something else and come back to it, you can do that too. Um, that's completely up to you. The places up front here on the painting where you're working, uh, are going to have the larger gaps and the darker circles because they're closer to you. Whereas the places that are further away, the circles are going to be um, less contrasting, have less contrast, and the circles will be a little bit harder to see. As you can see in the picture that they're smaller and flatter because they level out and the elliptical circles of the lace pattern kind of level out more like that. So it's just sort of one of those interesting things that you, you kind of have to see and observe. And the more you spend time in nature observing, the better you get at, of course, rendering it and painting it. And so I'm just sort of dancing my brush along here in sort of a, a willy-nilly sort of um, pattern. And this is sort of a, a nondescript, um, indecisive, I'll come over it with some more decisive strokes later to indicate some more predominant patterning in the um, texture of the foam. But for now, this indicates just some of the patterning in this. There's so many different kinds of sea foam that is out there. There's, um, just depending on the waves and the wind. Um, I lived on the Atlantic Ocean during Hurricane Sandy, and we, there was foam that was, you know, six feet deep. <laughs> and um, when I was, we lived right on the beach, and I ran up to the top of the sand dune and looked out over on the water, and, <clears throat> and it, it, usually the sand dune was way above the water. But this time, I mean, that time, Hurricane Sandy, the, the sand dunes themselves had brought the foam right up to the top of the sand dunes. It was really quite a moment. And that, uh, that sea foam at that point was like a honey-colored peanut butter. It was, it was kind of gross. All churned up. <laughs> okay, so over here now, the because it's getting further and further away, the, the patterning of the sea foam is getting less and less um, curly, and it's just leveling out. Oops, sorry, I missed your comment. So as we get over here, 
And this is why I keep a little bit of the Galka gel. You could use linseed oil too. Um, it sort of thins it out. Now, I don't like how I have sort of a, a globby swish there. So I'm gonna just kind of blend that in. I don't, you know, it looks too clunky, which makes it, which um, I lose the illusion of it being distant. I don't know if any of you follow my blog, but a f I don't know, a few weeks ago or whatever it is, a month ago, I wrote a blog about um, knitting. I knit and, and I've, I've been following more complicated knitting patterns and some of the patterns that I follow, the, the, the people who write the patterns are not communicating very well, some of them. And it's so frustrating to be following a pattern and there's a problem with the with the directions and I, I vowed in my blog to you that I would do everything I could to communicate <laughs> something that it just because it's so hard to, if if you don't understand something and so anyway I if you have a question and I am not communicating it properly please 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 do not hesitate <laughs> to ask me especially at a workshop I, I do not want anybody to to ever feel what I feel when I'm following these knitting patterns and pulling my hair out because it just doesn't make sense. At least with the painting, you can scrape it off and you haven't wasted too much time. I'll tell you, with those knitting patterns, you might have wasted six hours of an evening. You can't just, you can't just wear a sweater with, you know, one arm six inches short. It doesn't work. I guess you can. <laughs> okay, so now I'm, I'm coming back through here and I'm just sort of taking a few highlights and I'm just taking the edge of my brush and I'm cornering, you know what, I'm gonna get a smaller brush. What's this one? And I'm cornering um, just a little bit of the highlights as they come down. And they're, they're doing that cat paw thing as it sort of comes down and you get the finger, like the fingertips, like this. And giving that curve, the curvature at the end. And this is still not my brightest white, but this is giving a little bit lighter illusion at this point. Just some highlights just on top. This one, there's not a lot of highlights right in here, but it's really hitting right on the edge of the foam here. And I'm just going around those um, shadows under the, the foam where I painted them. So we're just gonna tuck in some brighter, like that, right along the edge. And again, that's just some pretty clean, light very light purple and white right into the pile of purple that i made i'm just putting the white and every now and then i might take and clean up the background with the this background color that i already developed I might take a 
hard line there. That that has an interesting effect too. Just just to press a light twirl press. Especially when you're out planner painting. Use that one to help you get that that neat sort of sea foam. A gentle scumble, 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 press, scumble. So those of you who are watching coming to my Destin, Florida workshop, <laughs> we're gonna do this one. Scumble, 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 press, scumble. I have some, some people are signed up. There's still some spots available, so if you would like to come. That's a fun one. We, the, the water is just, that's the main draw, the water at this workshop. It's so beautiful. I, I really have never seen anything like it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is take a nice white and just kind of scumble it around along the edge clean my brush off and just sort of make this look build this up right along the edge if you're hearing a new sound in my studio today I have a, a, a fan drawing the air out which is kind of nice I, I keep, I don't have solvents that I'm breathing, but eventually the oils do get to me after a while. If you make a mistake I think that that was too bright so I'm just lifting it off a little bit with my brush and that's okay too you can kind of just scoop and wipe and down and just lift a little like that again I can keep working at this for a long time <laughs> It's a, uh, it's just one of those paintings that I, you know, can play with for a long time. Sea foam is so fun. It's so relaxing too, especially if you're out on the beach, just working with it. I wanna get this, this one is right up front, so it's really gonna, get a lot of attention, so I want to get this one just right. And give it a purple shadow sort of underneath. edge a little. Just kind of sharpening this a little because I'm going to come back through with a nice strong dark accent. And I want this edge here to be a little bit softer.
All right, maybe just a little bit more patterning here. But you can see by building up over that darker layer that was underneath, how that helps to just have that layer there so that it creates the illusion of this foam being on top. Now, if you have a question about one of my workshops or newsletter or something and you want um, me to get back at you right away, leave your email here and I will have my husband screenshot these comments or questions because these videos seem to take a long time to upload. I don't know why. So um, that way I can get back at you sooner rather than later. Or you can just go to my website and email me if you have a question. Okay, let me get the, um, the dark now. I wanna get this much better. And this is where we can really start to see And I'm cleaning my brush off right after each one because otherwise it can start to get muddy between um, between strokes. up here have to be really small. Got some going way in the distance back here. Well, anyway, this is a painting that would need a lot of work, but I hope that that helps give you the idea of how you would do that out on the ocean next time you are out plein air painting. I hope that that helped and that um, you just got some tips and techniques for your next plein air adventure. All right, you guys, be sure to check out those links when this video is uploaded and be sure to join my newsletter, check out my blog. And if you have any questions about my workshops, um, there's spaces in all of them. So I hope to see you at one of them. And as well, I have some workshops um, on my website. 
All right, you guys, check out those links below and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.